Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel today. Yes, two days in a row we'll make a video, but today we're here to talk about a specific Celtic player, as you can already see in the title of the video. You know who we're going to talk about. He's been causing quite a storm on social media over the past, you know, kind of 48 hours. I was going to actually make a video on it yesterday, but I already had my video planned when it was fresh and uh, just on the papers uh, and in the papers such. Uh, that's what I might say. Um, but I love you and Cham has declared his interest that he would actually like to move on from Celtic. He's holding nothing back by the looks of things and he has came out, openly said, you know what, I don't want to be at Celtic anymore. He may not have been as um, brutal as that, but you know, we get the point in what he's saying and I love Ian Cham, a player who's been linked with moves away from Celtic for the past uh, month or so since the end of the season. As someone who's struggled to get into the team as maybe much as he would have liked last season as well, um, and and obviously kind of probably fell away a little bit morale wise and socially since Musa left the club as well. He's he's openly came out and said that he believes his time at Celtic is over and he believes he's done everything he can and and peaked basically. Uh, his football ability won't go any further playing for Celtic. Now I completely, I fully understand the argument, right? I can understand where Olivier is coming from when he says, you know, I don't feel like against the the competition in Scotland I can do anything different i don't think i can get better i don't believe i'll improve i believe i need to play in one of the top leagues i need to move to france germany spain england etc he's came out and he said that and yes i do understand that as much as i, I do back up scottish football and i do defend scottish football to the extent where i say it is an entertaining league and it's a league i genuinely enjoy watching the football in it is a league which does limit top players you know you look at van dyke you look at one yama um, these are two players who off the top of your head straight away you, you, you think of those names and you look how much more they've done now that they've moved they're Champions League finalists uh, one of them's Champions League winner since they moved on from Celtic and they developed their careers further they've done everything they could here they got to as good a level as they could and then they moved on but the main topic from the whole Olivier and Cham scenario and everything that he's came out and said, uh, I can't I can't remember the source off the top of my head, but the source doesn't really matter in this situation. The fact he's said it is what matters. Um, the thing that is blown up and the the, the, the the obvious thing to say, and it really annoys the majority of Celtic fans, I think will be in agreement when I say this, the thing that annoys us the most is the, the disrespect um, of saying this while he's still under contract of the club, while he's still... Looking like he has a place in the team. We know he's a top player. Well, he has the fans backing. Don't personally know Neil Lennon's um, opinion on Olivier and Cham, whether or not he rates him as much as he may rate other midfielders at the club, such as McGregor and Christie and Rogic uh, and Brown. You know, he might not think he is as good as them or whatever, but, you know, he's came out and said this. and He's said basically how he wants to leave. He's disappointed. He's not been allowed to leave yet. He said this so openly, and it really just does disrupt a lot of things around the club, and it gets a lot of negative energy out. And it might, and and we've seen this before. It happened last year. It happened with Dedrick Boyata. Dedrick Boyata voiced that he didn't want to be at Celtic anymore. He didn't have any interest of in playing for the club. He did stay. Fans kind of forgave him, but it brings a lot of negativity. I mean, one thing that annoyed me after the whole Boyata scenario last year was the fact that we went into the next game, and when it was announced on the, the Tannoy system as part of the team, it was booed. Booed off the park. And the last thing I want to do, I want to see, because I don't partake in it, but when you go into a game, you don't want to see any of your players booed when they're being announced to the team. You want to be behind every player. You want to give them a reason to play for this badge. You don't want to be giving them a net, another reason why they want to leave the club. I understand Olivier and Cham wants to progress his career, and it always Celtic. For players like Olivier and Cham, the same as it was for Mr. Dembele, the same as I said yesterday, it'll probably be for Odson Edouard. For all these players who aren't brought up Celtic fans, Celtic is a great stepping stone for bigger things. And Van Dijk and Wanyama have been very big examples of that. And it was with every intention that we sign players like... Olivier and Cham, that they will be using the club as a stepping stone. Now, yes, it would be lovely in an ideal world, it would be fantastic for Olivier and Cham to sit down and go, do you know what? I'm fine here just now. I'll stay for nine. I might stay for ten. Because we know he's a great player and we'd love to see him stick around. Because when he plays his best, he's one of the best players in the country, one of the best players in the team. He's a remarkable player. He's an under-21 national for France um, regularly. Uh, and he's just overall got a great amount of talent. So in an ideal world, yes, it would be nice for him, but he could at least go about things in a better manner and without having to kind of not just embarrass the club, 
embarrassed the manager, embarrassed his teammates. He came out and said, no, I don't want to be here. They should have accepted the bids from Porto at the start of the month. I should be playing them now. And I'm sad that I'm not. That is pretty much what the guys came out and said. And the way that represents the club in a whole is it's not nice. It's not positive. It might turn off other players from coming to Celtic. They may feel like they're restricted when they move here. You look at a player like Mr. Dembele. He's just had the season of his life playing for Leon, one of the best players in Ligue 1 after only leaving Celtic a year ago now. And he's already one of the most looked at strikers in Europe for his age and for his ability. He could be going to much bigger things. Now, Olivier and Cham can replicate that. Just have some patience. Be happy in the situation you're in. You're getting paid to be a professional footballer at one of Europe's top clubs. Celtic are a massive, massive club. There's not many bigger in Europe when it comes to reputation, fan base. This is a huge club. And he should be grateful to have the opportunity to play. I don't see, no matter if you're brought up in the Celtic family or not, why you should have to go out and, in a negative way, say something like that. I know if you don't want to go, if you don't want to stay, you know what, that's fine. But voice it to your management, voice it to your staff. Get the move from inside. Don't go outside, try to do it and bring a lot of negative energy into the club. That is the annoying thing about this situation. The question is, will he remain at the club for the summer? I've been quite vocal on my opinions of Incham since towards the end of last season. I've always agreed, yes, he's a fantastic player. And as I said in this video, when he plays, he's best amazing. But my point was made clear when I made that Celtic tier video, who had sell, who had keep blah, blah. I put Incham in the sell column because I believe... That, this, I've seen it, you can you could see it last year, he didn't make many appearances, I think injury bogged him down and such, you could see that his attitude wasn't quite the same as when he first joined Celtic, and that's why I said, look, if you're getting £15 million for a player like a champ, capitalise on it, take the money and let him go, we shouldn't be selling our best players, right, it's, it, I agree with that argument, but if at the end of the day, he's acting as negative as this, he's not going to play any better to get his value to go up, so £15 million, if we were offered it, we should have took it, and I voiced that, I would love to keep him as well, I wasn't fussed, I wasn't saying get rid of him, but I'm saying if the money was right, the situation was right, and it was ultimately benefiting the club, and we had replacements lined up, yes, let him go for that amount of money, because we can bring in players who can do a job as well, but um, now he's vocally came out and said it, a lot of fans have turned the back on him, I did, really like him but I was on the fence that we could sell him now I believe everyone's on the same fence of just get him out because of comments like that it's the same situation with Boyata Boyata did win back the fans uh, I would say about a vast majority of them and then Cham's going to have to do the same thing and maybe he's jeopardised his chance of getting first team football going into the start of this season with these comments you know it's not just his career at Celtic he's ruining but he could be ruining the rest of his career because if he doesn't get any football from say now up to January or even worse from now to the end of the season if he doesn't leave Celtic in the next few weeks then who else? What, what clubs are going to say right? He's not played. For, what clubs are going to say he's not played football for a year? But we'll still get him because we know he can be good. He will still have interest from teams, especially in France. But with not playing that amount of football, his career might go elsewhere. And he's brought it himself with comments like that. I do wish the best for him in his career if he was to move on from Celtic. But I wish he could just go around all of this in a more professional, respectful manner because. Um, Ultimately, as I said, you play for one of the best teams in the world, and they've given him a lot. You know, he, they brought him into Celtic, gave him first team football, and uh, now he's what he threw it in the face of Neil Lennon and the rest of the coaching staff. But God knows how negative it might be. I, I guess Neil Lennon, over the coming days, will, will sort the situation with his staff and, and speak to Incham, see if they can organise a move for him, perhaps. Will he end up staying at the club? I honestly think he will. I don't know if, if Lennon and Celtic were ready to knock back those bids for Porto earlier in the transfer window for a fee which we're not entirely sure of. But if they were willing to knock it back then, I honestly see them doing the same now, even though he's voiced his intention to leave. I mean, Boya voiced his intention to leave. He only had a year on his contract but still kept him and took no money. I, I don't see Neil Lennon saying, do what, fine then, you get your way and go. I think he'll teach him a lesson, sit him down and say, no, so you get, you're under contract with Celtic and you should be happy for that. And uh, for your comments, you're going to get punished for it. Now, the last thing I want to see is negative energy in the training camp. You see what negative energy he has done for Neil Lennon at Hibs and such with the likes of Canberra. I don't want that to happen. I want the situation sorted. And if the best best thing to do is sell him, sell him. Take £10 million and let him cham go because he obviously doesn't want to be at Celtic. That would be my final opinion on it. Not much else to say. 
Uh, anyway, let me know. Do you think a champ should be sold now? And do you think he will remain as Celtic for the rest of the transfer window? Let me know in the comments below. If you have enjoyed the video, make sure to hit like and subscribe. It is greatly appreciated. And I'm going to try to keep doing my best to have videos out in July. People were asking about the kit videos. Yes, they will be out soon. We'll be doing kit videos again this year. I know they're everyone's favourites. So, can't wait to do them. But uh, if you enjoyed, like and subscribe. It is greatly appreciated. And uh, from me, I'll see you all next time.